Good afternoon. <laughs> Say I want to play with the strap. Oh, I have a bib right here I have to put on, and then we're going to go play. It's I keep thinking it's Friday, but it's Thursday. But tomorrow's an exciting day. <laughs> Alright, so this might be a little confusing of a shot, half cut up potato, but that potato is important because it has totally changed the way our night was going. I um, was preparing dinner and I cut my finger and like it's all covered up. There's like just a big band-aid on it right now, um, but I got a decent part of the nail. I honestly almost took the tip of my thumb off. But Peter is at Jewel now, going to get better band-aids and other stuff to kind of bandage this up. Um, we're kind of just like admitting defeat on this one. I, I didn't have a bad day. It was just one of those days where like things kept getting on top of each other and um, I don't know, it was just kind of one of those moments where like it happened and I'm just like ready to throw the towel in on the day. So Peter's also getting a couple of things from the ready-made bar at Jewel. The um, bean zucchini meat that I made for burrito bowls, we're just gonna eat with chips. And I don't know what else we're gonna do tonight, um, but the boys should be back home soon. James went with Peter. It's tough when it's like my thumb, basically everything I was in the middle of doing. I need it and I think it's okay. We basically just applied pressure to it and put the bandage around it. Like it doesn't need stitches. It doesn't need stitches. Um, so yeah, we'll see. We'll see how it is once we get it like situated better. Um, but it might just be a home vlog. Well, I'm at Jewel for a quick run. These are from James to Sarah. These are for the visitors we're going to see tomorrow. And it turns out, um, I don't know if Sarah said it in the four second clip, but she hurt herself cooking dinner tonight. So Sarah got a little hurt during prepping dinner, so James and I are running, running over to Jewel to uh, grab some last minute ready-made stuff to make dinner easier so we can get her finger patched up. And Eve treats too, because she's out. Right? Sarah's been talking non-stop about the summer edition. I don't know if this is new, they're different or she was thinking of last summer but i have to get it now here is what i did make for dinner oh yeah how was your trip to jewel thank you for all the treats thumbs up <laughs> <laughs> i feel like it's okay yeah. it just had potential to really not be okay yeah, if you went like any deeper at all <laughs> James is very passionate about this ball. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it's like I can go on. I can do tasks. I think I. it felt a little bit more dramatic when it first happened, but it's just like it was how close it was to being yeah. a trip to the hospital. Did you guys know I, had scoliosis? I have scoliosis? And I can't sit. <laughs> I can't sit on the ground long because my hips are crooked. Did you guys know that I have chopped the top of my finger off before? <laughs> Just with an X-Acto knife. At work. She calls me. I'm at work. I don't know. Are you getting sent to the hospital? Because I, I chopped I the went tip. to urgent care. Because I got the, the tip of my... I chopped the tip of my finger off. I don't know if you can really tell, but on the right side of my pointer... It doesn't like the curve starts a little bit earlier, and that's because that's where where I cut it. <laughs> We've literally been laying in this tent, and Sarah's been sitting here nursing for the past like good bit. Even Eve joined in on the relaxing fun. 
and she knows it. Can you even see you? <laughs> yeah. We have a really cool lens, so like it's really catches in good low light. They were just like, can you even see you? Um, surprise, surprise. Uh, we're going to the Earhart's tomorrow. Ayo. So we kind of, I don't know what ended up, it's like 8.30. And we haven't done anything after Sarah's like mishap and us eating dinner. Um, we kind of have to get ready because Eve's going to go to Christina and Grant's tomorrow morning and we're trying to leave early afternoon because we're only staying one night. We'll probably come back like late Saturday. Yeah, but I think we're still going to not be productive. Super, we're going to watch at least the first episode of this Expecting Amy, which is a three series, three episode mini series from Amy Schumer's first pregnancy. Um, I think We think it's on HBO Max. And so she didn't use IVF the first baby, right? Right. But she ended up doing IVF after for future children? Yeah. So I don't know if we said it, but he slept all night in his crib last night. So we're going to try for night number two. So we're going to get him in a fresh diaper, clean diaper. Going to get him his pajamas and we're going to lotion up his lotions and potions. He does some banana cream all over his body because the little boy's got sensitive eczema skin, just like his mom. And we've got some mysterious gel, I don't know what it is, it goes in his face. Um, what's it called? Mm. I don't know. And then we've got some cortisone for any spots of eczema that are popping up. You ready to get ready for bed? Are you ready? Transmodification Central. Are you ready? <laughs> oh, go two things. One, I heard the great expo a great explanation of art and why people like it so much. And it's because, ooh, let that auto focus fix. And it's because it not only is beautiful, but it, it freezes for certain pieces of art. It freezes your like memory in time of when you acquired said art. So not only do you have the emotion of what the, is being depicted, in the artwork, but it also has the emotional conviction, like invokes the emotion of the time what was going on in your life when you got said piece, which I think oh. is so true. Yeah, you know what's funny is I feel like that the most recently when listening to Swish and Flick, and like I'd be listening to Swish and Flick and working on a design piece, and then every time I saw that design piece, I'd think of Swish and Flick. If you want to walk around, we'll showcase. And our baby loves art. Yeah. He loves. I told one. Amazon machine, talking to a different Amazon machine. Do you have the Z Lake? No. Oh, thank gosh. Um, he loves the map, and he loves this world showcase, and the sweetest new thing is he loves the embryo mm -hmm. in the living room. He looks up at it and the sweet pea above it. Yeah. He just looks up at it and it's like, babies know. I also, because James is asleep, cannot do, I was going between doing a workout video and an eight mile run because like that's what I have to do today or tomorrow. So I can't do a workout video in the living room because it's right next to James's room, so it's like 10.30 at night and I gotta get changed for a run. And my Achilles yeah. is still hurting me, so. Take it slow. I want to do a Sarah Ramble after that, watching the first episode of Amy Schumer, or Expecting Amy, because mm -hmm. she said that she resented how little she knew, like how hard pregnancy was. And that like she wanted to be open about her experience. It's great, but if you if vomit makes you queasy, <laughs> it's not for you. Like Sarah doesn't like vomit. Like mm -hmm. she just wasn't like she was like <laughs> Yeah. Um so yeah, I wanna talk about that, but with weaning a baby from nursing. Side note, body glad. Not sponsoring the vlog, but sponsors my body when I go on runs more than six miles. KT tape is my secret uh secret hint at uh, not experiencing bloody nipples. Just, that's the life of running. Little angel boy, snoozing away. Okay, my Sarah ramble, it's gonna be short and sweet. Um, so like I said about Amy, about being upfront and how hard things are um, during parenthood, etc., all of that. We've been very upfront with our battle with infertility. Um, and honestly, I took to our fertility treatments very well. I did not have extreme um, reactions, changes, anything like that. And so I 
also was that way with pregnancy. I didn't throw up. Obviously, I had a hard time becoming pregnant. I had an extremely difficult labor and delivery um, experience. Hormonally, through all the medication, pregnancy, I've been A+. Plus. This weaning, however, I did not expect for it to take such a toll on me as it has. I've heard stories from people on the different fertility pages I follow, um, and I am here to continue to normalize this conversation because it is hard, and I constantly, maybe not constantly, I am on the verge of crying. We have always, always felt as long as James's belly was full, we were going to be totally happy. Of course, there's, you know, I'm thinking about each time, you know, we're getting towards the end of me nursing him. And I do have that on my mind. Um, but truly, like, I can feel that this is chemical. And so I'm a little, I'm going to say I'm a little vulnerable at the moment. Um, but I think our plan is really good. We set out 10 weeks for us to do it. So every 10 days, um, we add one more bottle in and take away one nursing session. Um, and we are at two. Um, and I think like just getting started is definitely a big step, but, um, but yeah, I think it's great that Peter gets time to be with him while he's eating and have those moments. Um, I honestly, mentally, it's been good for me um, to have the relief of knowing that I don't have to um, sit and nurse as, you know, there's pros and cons um, to that side of thing as well. So yeah, that's where I'm at right now. A little bit shaken um, because it wasn't what I anticipated, um, but that that is real life right now. I'm folding laundry and I have to admit I made the biggest mistake by washing that Cubs blanket with clothes. I did not expect. Look at that. It's everywhere. Also, laundry never ends. Am I right? Look at this. Beautiful, calm. It's a little chilly. It might be just below 50, but it's calm. There's no wind, so that's huge, especially by the lake. And the clouds are high. Look at that skyline. Um, because I told you before, I have a fear of running really close to the water. Um, you'd be surprised at how much just running on the actual trail rather than the, the cement front takes away. At this point, I'm usually closer to two. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty much a, a half to a three quarters of a mile further along on my run when I get to that point. <gasps> is that fence down? Oh no, is the fence? Oh no, the fence is still there. Oh, I almost got so excited. There's a brand new asphalt. This continues, but there's a fence. So I have to hop up there by the bikes. Oh, when they open that up, it's gonna be glorious. Anyway, so because I didn't run on the, the absolute lakefront, I have to go like a half mile further, which brings me closer to, or even past the Drake if I remember. So I might end up like getting close to the water. Um, but I feel good. Just taking it easy. Eight miles tonight at an easy pace. Um, ramping the legs back up from last weekend. Cooled down during the week. Ramping them back up to the three and a half hour run I have on Sunday, which will be around 18 miles again. But they, my schedule just says, just do three and a half hours, no distance requirement. But I know that'll end up being 18-ish. Take it as a grain of salt, because I'm on my iPhone. Okay, there, it looks pretty bright, right? Terrifying, it just black abyss. I'm like, what is that, 50 feet away maybe? Which I usually run right up there during the daylight, but wait until I get around the corner. Luckily, since, um, the distance I'm going, I don't have to go too far in the darkness, but I want to show you this corner. That's just like two blocks worth of very dark darkness. Here we go. Remember, it's dark, but it looks worse on this camera phone. 
Look at this. This is terrifying. Oh, you can't even see that on the, on, the, on the screen. But here is, I don't know if you'll be able to make it out. Yeah, this reflective part. Here's the Yeti advertisement. Grizzlies can run up to 35 miles per hour. Better keep up your cardio. There's a bear right there. Yeti sign. The Drake. 900 North Michigan. John Hancock building. And creepy dark water. Okay. That is, I have another dark patch over there in about a mile that the lights are just not on right now. But I don't get as close to the water like that again for the rest of the run that the route I'm taking. Yes, this beach right here is called Oak Street Beach. That is the beach, that's the, the happening beach when you are a suburban high school kid. That's like parents, guardians, getting up early on Saturday. We're taking the Metro in if you're a real suburban person. Taking the Metro in to the South Street Station, hopping on that trolley, summertime free Chicago trolley, and we're going to Oak Street for the day. When you get here, you're in high school, you don't realize how long it takes to actually get here. You're exhausted by the time you get here, the sun's beating down with you. You're here for like 10 minutes, maybe an hour. And you're like, forget this, let's go to the water tower place and get some food. <laughs> See, this is like a cool, hip place that's opened up in the summer usually for Oak Street Beach. And here's Oak Street Beach. See? Fancy. Fancy, right? Right? It's like the beach for Chicagoans. Okie dokie, May 6th. Cheerfulness is what graces the axles of the world. Don't go through life creaking. H.W. Biles. I don't know how I feel about this one when he's sleeping in a grid thing. I know, he's so far away. And he's been asleep for so long right now. I know, it was, it's just, just weird not having him sleep on my lap. Right. But he keeps moving and he's been asleep for a couple hours. I'm sure he'll wake up soon for a bottle and then yeah. I'll get to hang out with him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's good to be home. It's good to be home. We know what our goals are, we know what we hope to accomplish, and believe me, it's the most exciting and challenging assignment we've ever tackled at Walt Disney Productions.